Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and let's talk a little bit about render proxies in Octane Render for Moto. So render proxies, as you, as you may know, are a way to offload really dense geometry um, or textures uh, onto a disk, and you don't have to bring them into the scene until render time. So if you have a rabbit hopping through a forest, you don't have to have the entire forest and all those giant textures in RAM in your scene. You just have some low res uh, stand-ins, and then when it's time to render, you, references, you reference these external scene files, and they are streamed into the renderer uh, from disk and um, are rendered that way, you know, saving you some, some memory footprint and interactivity. Um, uh, on you know interactively on your in your scene file, so they're useful, right? They're really useful, and especially for like situations with forests or replicators or buildings, things like that. Uh, render proxies are really used a lot. So I'm going to demonstrate in this little uh, whatever you want to call it, sea urchin, maybe we'll called a sea urchin star thing. Let's call it star thing, and um, just to show you how it's done now. It's a little more refined in Moto or V-Ray, and there is a V-Ray um, render proxy tutorial on Pixel Fondue that I did a while ago, so you can search for that on the main site or the YouTube channel if you're a V-Ray user. And in Moto, it's, it all works kind of the same way with V-Ray and Moto. You can select an item and create a render uh, proxy really easily, and it creates a nice little um, decimated polygon, like low polygon uh, stand-in for you. Not Octane. Octane's a bit of a pain in the butt, but it works and it, it's useful um, for you know for some situations. So it, it's worth knowing how to do that. So what what we're going to do is uh, uh, just bring up Octane Render here, and you do have to actually initialize Octane because if you try to export a scene file without first trying to do a render, um, it hasn't checked the licensing yet. At least I got an error. So I you know I think you have to hit Go to see your file and then you can export it. Now, another thing I've noticed, let me just stop this. If I click this little export icon, this little guy with the green arrow coming down, and this, I think it's their Orbix icon. It's probably really hard to see on YouTube, but if I click that, I see that export animation is visible, but not export frame. That's grayed out. I don't know why that is. I know that if I start rendering again, export frame is available, or if I even pause it, export frame is available. And that's really what you want. Unless you have animation in your scene, you don't want to export the entire animation. So if you have like a tree and it's 9 million polygons, you hit export animation, it's going to export a you know a point cache at 9 million verts for every single frame of the animation. You really don't want that. You just want one frame. And it's going to export the entire scene. So you just want one object in there. Again, it's a much bigger pain in the butt than like V-Ray or Moto where you can just you know spit out um, individual items in your scene as external uh, render proxies, and it'll create a nice little mesh for you. Octane, uh, it's it's you know you do this one at a time. So I you know bring in my I've got my star object here. I'm gonna save this as um, export frame, and it's gonna give me a couple options. One is an OCS file, which which will work, but it's sort of an older Octane file. The other one is an Orbix or o o r b x file. It's a little bit newer. It'll contain a point cache within the file versus saving out a separate Olympic file. So Orbix is a little bit better. My guess is all this will be replaced by USD at some point. But anyway, right now we're using uh, Orbix. And I'll just, I already have one here called Star Thing. So I'm just going to select that and uh, replace it. In fact, before I do that, I, I'm going to do a um, item mask on here, even though it might do that. Um, I might do that automatically, but if I create an item mask and I can uh, do some basic shading, so I'll just, uh, we could do as much shading as you want. You can do complex shading, do whatever kind of shading you want. I'm just gonna make a red. And that will be saved with the file. So um, let me just update Octane here. So if I, yeah, so you know, let me go to uh, export frame and ORBX and we'll do star thing. And this should uh, keep the color and the geometry and that just like that, it's exported. So I'm going to stop this now. And then what we have to do is, is point to that file we just saved so it can be loaded in at render time. So I'm going to press N to create a new empty mesh item. We'll call this uh, just uh, proxy. And you'll notice if you kind of uh, scroll down to the Octane section, you'll see proxy file name. And here we just point to that file, uh, star thing. And that's kind of it. Let me hide the original one. You don't see anything. It, it's just like an empty object pointing to that file. There's no nice like decimated uh, mesh item or you know a bunch of polygons there to give me an idea of where it is in the scene or how big it is or what the transforms are. There's nothing there. It's just pointing to that file. So if I hit go, 
it, it's there it is looks great it worked and i can you know um you know transform it around i just don't see anything in the viewport <laughs> which isn't super useful right so you can make your own um low poly objects and so if i just you know throw a cube in there the cube is not rendering even if i refresh the cube does not render if there if there's geometry in here and it's pointing to a proxy it's just going to render the proxy so that's good and with a cube in here i can see you know i could kind of move it around and um, rotate it and and you know adjust scale and see where it is which is nice and so it's it's nice so that's something you would normally probably do um is create your scene file like that and then create your render proxies in that manner so there's that and what's nice is actually they will work with uh but just go ahead and hide this guy and and do let's do a, a replicator they do work with replicators too so if we're doing a forest or a whole cloud of these things let me just do like a point cloud here and my replicator i'll just prototype be the star thing and then oh, i'm sorry the, the proxy and then the point source to be the particle cloud and you know there it is you know they're there they're there they are there um make this particle cloud a little bit bigger like so and uh yeah looks pretty cool right um uh, maybe max particles 20 i don't know it's super fast too i mean you know let's do max particles like 500 it's just all in the gpu and it's just it's just it's fast <laughs> so that is cool just mess with some of these uh replicator settings like 360 con uh for twist three oops 360 shift control enter should do it for everything and uh random scale let's do 75 sh shift control enter and let's uh spread these things out a little bit more 10 and 10 and yeah okay anyway okay let's take a look at a higher poly object like a tree and see how that works so i've got a couple of trees made already we'll go tree a and we'll do a new mesh item we'll call that uh, ground and maybe one more tree b like so and then i just point them to my uh proxy so tree b i've got a tree b here tree a i point to tree a and of course it doesn't load anything in yet but it just goes you know it's just pointing to them it's not uh, bogging down the scene at all these are really high poly tree items from uh, this ground item two from mega scans and they have i think 8k textures so you know they're they're pretty pretty big items i'm not going to go through and make um well actually i will so ground let's do uh yeah let's just make uh some ground again that's probably nowhere near the right size tree i'll just do um a couple cylinders just so i know that there's something there whoops tree there's one cylinder and the other tree we'll do one more cylinder maybe make tree b like skinnier and taller so i can distinguish between them now again i've just i'm just throwing polygons in these mesh items they're not going to render because they're referencing proxies but they will give me at least an indication of where they are in the scene i did not take the time to make them the right scale or or anything like that though so again um way better in v-ray <laughs> and moto to be honest but so i've got this stuff in here if i hit render here in octane it's gonna start streaming this stuff in and like i said this is um you know uh, high poly objects and like a lot of uh 8k textures and oh this is interesting so here we've got uh the ground um here let me look through the scene here like this we've got a couple of trees let me just um if you remember this was my tree b we'll just move that guy over and it's just super fast i mean like i said these are 8k textures and high poly objects but they're just in the gpu and gpus are fast and can throw memory around really fast and so let me just make a daylight environment here or something a little bit nicer looking um so it's really pretty impressive so you can imagine like a whole forest full of these things is pretty cool now you'll notice that the ground is kind of red okay say i want to adjust that do i have to recreate this whole proxy item with uh different materials and save out a new orbix file no i can actually select the ground and here you'll see edit proxy file and click that and i get you know basically a, a octane style node graph will show up and then i can go in and adjust that specular back to white and you can see you know, now it's fixed the ground right so i can you know edit my shading uh with this you know octane node graph by bringing in um by hitting edit proxy you know make whatever changes i want and then you can you know hit save and it'll save that orbix file 
uh, save back over the old Orbix files. So, so that's nice. That's nice. You can do that. You don't have to make new ones. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So if I add, let's just play around here. If I add a, a replicator to the scene, and if I add a, let's say, particle modifier, um, let's do a, actually, you know what, let's use this ground plane here, and let's add a surface particle generator to that. So we have a surface particle generator, and uh, source surface will be the ground plane, and yeah, so we've got, uh, should have quite a few um, polygon, or a, uh, quite a few. Let me turn on locators and uh, look at this again. See if we can... Oh, there they are in the scene. <laughs> Little orange dots. Kind of hard to see. Polite, you can see them. So each of those is going to be a tree. There's a lot of them. Let's see if Octane can do this. So I hit stop here. I'm going to, in the replicator, let's do prototype will be... Um, we'll just do uh, tree A, I guess. Actually, we'll, do, we'll bring up the schematic and do two prototypes. So let's add the uh, replicator here. And um, particle source on the replicator will do uh, the surface particle generator. If you want to add multiple, um, you know, you can see what's going on here. If you want to add multiple uh, prototypes to a replicator, you can actually do that in the schematic. You can only add one in this little drop down here. But in a schematic, you can, um, you know, hook more of them up like that. So you can see how that sort of switched it up a little bit. And you can also put all these in a group, and you can, like over here in groups, you can make a group out of these items, like a new group out of those items. And and then you could, if you wanted to, you could also, um, you know, use this group as a, as a particle source as well, or a prototype source as well, kind of like that. So however you want to do it, that's how you could do it, but you have to kind of get to the schematic to do that. And so let's hide that, and uh, yeah, that's a lot of trees. Should we hit render? That's going to be crazy. Let me pull back a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's try it. We'll see what happens. Here, render. See if uh, Octane can handle this. I have two 2080 uh, TI. Yeah, handled it with ease. Two 2080 TIs in here. Um, so this is God knows how many trees. You know, I mean, just a ton of trees. And 8K textures. And probably billions of polygons. I mean, look at that. I'm pushing in like crazy. That's an 8K texture. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. Let's make our ground item a little, a little bigger. Actually, let's adjust this. Let's say uh, average spacing one meter. Uh, that's a little bit better there. Maybe 0.33. Okay. Not so bad. Let's adjust the height of some of these guys um, in our replicator maybe random scale 75 percent and twist uh, 360 on y okay now it's looking a little more a little more like a real grove of trees there uh, but it's just i mean that's just real time moving around it is just unbelievable how fast that is i mean that it's just shocking it's shocking shocking that's no rtx or anything so we get rtx in there um once that's supported fully i know it is in the beta it's just going to be and you can just work in that viewport, honestly. Um, anyway, so there you go. Uh, render proxies in Octane. Super fast. Super efficient. Super huge pain in the ass to set up. But, uh, yeah, they work. Yum, yum.